Welcome back everyone to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. Last time around, we went ahead and made it so that we can actually take our models and show them in the database. Now this time around, I wanna go ahead and go through and make sure that we can take our Java code and push an object into the database. So let's go ahead and hop in and do that. So the first thing that we are going to need is our repositories. So these are very simple because Spring Data JPA are, is actually going to do that for us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new package new package and then i'm going to call this repositories i could type correctly this morning repositories and first i'm just going to quickly make a user repository so i'm going to make a new interface go ahead and call this user repository this is going to be what actually sends the information to the database so this needs to extend the jpa repository like so, and inside here we're gonna have an application user because that's what we are storing. And then it is an integer because that is the ID. Go ahead and import this stuff. Import JPA and import application user. So the JPA interface is going to provide us with basic CRUD. There's one other method or fetching that I wanna get. So we're gonna say optional application user. And this is going to be find by username. And then I'm gonna pass in a string username so the reason why we have this is one we're going to need it later on for spring security and two it's just going to be kind of useful oh and i spelled option wrong optional and this is essentially going to allow us to not have to pass nulls around it'll be a little bit nicer or that is our user repository excuse me we're also going to quickly make a role repository so if i go ahead and go into class and say actually we don't want a class we want an interface Grab a new interface, go ahead and say role repository, like so. Uh, also, we need to make sure we mark this with at repository. Otherwise, it's not going to be created as a bean. So now we're good to go. Now inside role repository, go at repository, like so. Make sure that spring makes this as a bean. It's going to extends JPA repository to get our CRUD function on everything else. This is going to store a role. And then this is an integer. Go ahead and import these good things like so. Theoretically, we don't really need anything in here. I am going to go ahead and say optional and we're going to say role, find role by uh, authority. And then this is going to be a string authority. So again, we're gonna do something similar. I don't think this one's needed, but I am just gonna throw it in there for the time being. So now at this point, again, it's not gonna change anything, but we can go ahead and test to make sure that the repository is working. So if we go into our Twitter backend, we can say at bean and do a public command line runner. Actually, we don't need public, we just want command line runner. We're going to call this run and we're going to pass in a role repository, which will be auto wired. And we'll call this role repo. We'll also pass in a user repository. User repo, like so. And go ahead and import the bean import command line runner what this is going to do is as soon as our spring application loads up it's going to be able to run user repository as soon as our application loads up it's going to run some code so in here we're going to have a return args and a lambda function and in here, we can say first, we want to say role repo dot save. And then we'll say that we want to save a new role ID one, and then maybe we'll pass in a user like so. Go ahead and import role. So this should actually save a role. And then we can also say um, role user u equals new user like so and then we'll say um, go ahead and import this 
Nope. This should be an application user. Post new application user. That way it actually imports the correct thing. Then we can go ahead and say u.set. Um, let's just set a couple things. So set first name, unknown. U.set last name. Say coder. And then u.set will get, um, we'll say hash set. Um, roll. It rolls equals new hash set. Like so. And then we'll add a roll in there. We'll say um, roles dot add. We'll say role repo dot find by name. Actually find by authority. Um, and we're going to get the user authority dot git. Um, did I spell this wrong? Let's see. Roll find. Oh, it's because should we find by authority, not find role by authority. Okay, and then we'll say u.set authorities. And then we'll pass in the roles. We'll try to save this user. Uh, user repo dot save. Again, this just comes with our JPA. We can save you. So now, theoretically, whenever we spin up our application by running this right here, it should show a new user in the database and show a role in the database. So nothing went wrong inside of the startup. So if we go into our dBeaver and refresh our Twitter DB, so let's go into our tables and refresh. We have one user. Um, the user role junction didn't seem to work, so we'll see. So we have a user ID, unknown code. The rest of this is null because obviously we didn't set all those. And maybe we just need to refresh this role junction. You see user 2 is unknown coder, has role ID 1. So now what we can do is we can move forward and actually make a service which talks to our repository, which is typically how we want to do those things. So let's go ahead and do that next. So now I'm going to go ahead and just comment all of this out other than the role, because we are going to want to make sure we do in fact have a role in here every time we try to create a user, because for the time being, we're just going to automatically assign role of user. So now I'm going to make a new package, and this is going to be dot services. And we are quickly going to make a new class and call this user service. Cool. So we're going to have at service on the top of this to denote this as a service being. And I want to mention that normally you would probably put at transactional, uh, but for whatever reason, at transactional was not playing very nicely with the other things that I was trying to do inside this class. So for now, it's not going to be there. We are going to pull in our two repositories. We're not going to have a service for a role because we're not really going to be creating roles on the fly. We're going to have predetermined ones. So first we will pass in a repository for a user, user repo. And we'll have a private final role repository like so role repo and then we are going to add auto wire on the constructor so i'll have public user service pass in the user repository user repo and pass in the role repository role repo and go ahead and set these in here this dot user repo is equal to user repo and this dot role repo typing is not great today i'm sorry role repo go ahead and pass in the auto wire and make sure we have all of these imported 
then now Spring will manage the implementations and everything of a user repository and role repository. So to be able to create a user, we want to essentially take in some information, set the role, and do all of that good stuff. We're going to go ahead and make a public application user register user method. We are going to take in the application user that we get straight from the front end for the time being and go ahead and import application user. We're going to return null for a second. Now what we can go ahead and do is first we are going to make a set of roles similar to what we did inside of the um, Twitter backend application.java. So user.getAuthorities and then we'll go ahead and um, grab import roles and import set. And then we will say roles.add. We are going to do essentially the same thing. Role repo dot find by authority. And this is just going to be user. Once again, is this, oh, dot get because it's an optional. We should be able to essentially guarantee that it's in there because of the fact that we're going to insert it every single time. So I'm not too concerned. And then finally, we can say user dot set authorities and set those roles. And then finally, we will return user repo dot um, save user. So essentially, we're going to do the same thing, except inside the service, we're going to make sure that the user gets the authority that they need. So now if we go back into our uh, Twitter backend application and test this really quickly, we can get rid of all of this stuff. We can get rid of the user repository and put user service. Hopefully it doesn't cause a circular dependency here. User service, and we can say user service dot register user. I'm just going to put in a new user, although we can't really do that because we need to pass in some information. So I guess to user u equals new user, we'll pass in some information about the user. We'll save u here, and we need to, we shouldn't need to, it's application user. Just need to remember that application user, application user. Cool you dot set first name unknown you dot set last name coder and then now we should essentially get the same result so save the application has refreshed so now if we go in here again and refresh our user table refresh we still get the same information because it worked correctly Go into our user role junction, refresh. The information's still here. Go into role, refresh. And it's still there. For some reason, it, it says it's not linking correctly to the role, but it's all good. Alrighty, everyone. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. Today, we went ahead and set up our repositories and actually tested them to make sure that we can store information on our database. Next episode, we'll go ahead and make it so the user can interact with the backend through in front end client and send information to be stored in the database. So with that being said, I appreciate everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. Either way, it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys are new, be sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss out on any new videos. And if you have any suggestions or anything like that, go ahead and leave them in the comments. That being said, I appreciate you all. This has been Ether on Coder. Peace out, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.